Hi, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we'll talk a little bit about how to write a test plan um, and you know a kind of tips and tricks that will make this daunting process easier. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about how test plan is you know a huge theoretical document and to actually write it you will have to you know go through a certain level of you know a professional qualification of sorts in order to be able to do that um, and many more actually to begin with. Uh, to cite a personal experience I used to you know I, I know test plan used to be the most important interview question in all uh, you know online content uh, wherever you see them so uh, whenever I used to prepare for interviews I had this 11 point uh, you know 11 point checklist so if anybody would ask me what are the contents of a test plan I had these 11 pointers now I feel how futile that effort is and you know uh, how you know simple this task is uh, because at the end of the day when you plan well you execute better so uh, planning does not have to have like you know a set structure or uh, I mean yes structure helps definitely but it does not have to have the XYZ ingredients uh, mandatorily for it to be uh, you know effective I feel like whatever plan works best for your situation on hand analyzing all the dynamics that go into it uh, I believe that's the best test plan however we'll talk more about it with the help of an example um, now test plan is a topic that we uh, you know deal with as two different segments one is test plan as a you know phase in the software testing life cycle where the entire testing activity uh, is planned beforehand and how it's a dynamic activity and how it is a continuous process and it goes through uh, phases one two and three of the software testing life cycle so uh, that is not the kind of test plan we are going to deal with in this segment especially this is exclusively about the work product the document that is the test plan so Test plan is a document that is most of the times created by one representative from the QA team, usually the test lead or the test manager, whoever the, is the in charge for the overall delivery of the QA product. Uh, however, it's not just a one person effort. It is never going to be something that is, you know, a one person, one time event. Test planning is a continuous activity as I said as I said and test plan a lot of times we will think that it is just like a calendar which will tell you day one person one start this and this at a particular date. No it's not like that it's more like a manual it's more like your instruction booklet on how you conduct your day-to-day -day activities uh, so when to do them what to do exactly how to do and what to expect so all of these are very very uh, well documented in a well written test plan. So having said that, test planning, even though it is driven by one person, it's a go not going to be extremely successful if one person does it. That is, if team lead is solely responsible for the creation of the test plan. It's a combined effort, uh, but the team has more like a co you know contributory role uh, than the role of leading the entire process. Um, so we do have a lot of articles on our website, um, you know, softwaretestinghelp.com. Um, so before we go any further, let me just, you know, talk about what should be the contents in a test plan. And this is also a test plan document that is also available on our website. Uh, so I'll just quickly take you through it. So we'll try to map the contents that we look here and the contents that we see in the test case to test plan document and we'll do a comparative analysis. Now very important first thing is the scope. Scope is very important because unless you know the boundaries it's very in it's difficult to you know understand um, what extent of work are we dealing with so it's very very important to list out the scope first. Then it is very important for QA teams to mention out of scope. See the reason why we have to be very very clear with the test plan is not only because we are giving instructions to our own QA team at the same time we are sharing the test plan document with the development business anal analyst, uh, analysis team with the client and with the project managers. So um, a test plan document is like a handshake that you provide with all of these team members. So whatever you 
provide in here is a way of communication, is a way of establishing the clarity with the rest of the project team members. So when we are including the scope, it is also a good idea to include what is not in scope. So let's say you are not going to deal with performance testing. So you'll go ahead and mention there saying that performance testing is not a part of this release. We are not going to test it. Or, or for example, if there are 10 features and you don't have the data to test one of them, you'll go ahead and mention that because of the in unavailability of the data, this is something we are not going to test. So for this release, requirement XYZ is out of scope. So really, when it comes to test planning, this is one of the areas where you might want to provide excessive data, uh, I mean excessive information as opposed to less. So here less is not more, more is also less in some, some circumstances. So be sure to include everything that you can possibly think of. The next thing is assumptions. So let's now take a look at this document and let me give you a few, uh, you know, um, uh, glimpses of what kind of assumptions we can make. Uh, so introduction, you know, is the purpose of the project. What is the project like and who is this document intended for? Uh, then comes the test strategy. So test strategy is really about, you know, what you're going to test and how you're going to test it. So this is very, very particular to the application under test, um, very specific to the product that you're testing. So let me give you a few, uh, you know, um, examples of what kind of assumptions are placed here. So the very first assumption it says production like data is required and available in the system to start a functional testing and we know that as testers this is uh, something that is very important unless say for example you're test testing a search feature for the search feature to result in, to return any search results, you actually need that kind of data to be there in the back end. If that's not there, the search results will not be, uh, you know, we will not be able to test it effectively. So production like data being there is an assumption that we're making. So basically assumptions is another way to say um, all the prerequisites that we would need from our end as a QA team to be satisfied before we go ahead and perform our testing. And it also says in each testing phase cycle 3 will be initiated only if the defect rate in cycle 2 is high. So we are just you know setting out some guidelines and telling them that we, we are going to run two cycles of testing, third cycle is only because only subject to the you know fact or you know subject to uh, the sort of defects that we identify in the first two rounds of testing. Then comes the schedule. So schedules is more, you know, uh, about how much time we're going to take and, you know, milestone list like, for example, in this document, uh, if I have to take you through the milestones, um, that would be over here. So we are talking about exactly what time, uh, you know, a particular phase in testing is starting, what time a particular phase is ending, you know, when is the next phase due, all of this, uh, all of those things. Um, now, as you can see, we have embedded these sheets into the test plan document. You don't have to do that. You can directly go ahead and place that information over there. Uh, the only reason that we find embedding easy is because we can reuse this test plan document for various projects, keeping the skeleton as is. Uh, at the same time, we make this, we keep this document small, concise, readable and all that. But then, you know, it's not something that you will have to do. Uh, then comes the roles and responsibilities, that is, you know, the team information and who is supposed to do what. A similar structure you will find over here. Let me, I think I'll go back here and communication plan and team roster role expectations. So you see this is where all the team members will provide the contact information just in case they need to, uh, you know, get in touch with each other. And then each one's role. So what is the project management team supposed to do? What is the test lead supposed to do when it comes to test planning activities? What is the test team supposed to do? So this is what I mean by test plan not being, you know, a calendar that will remind you to do something on a certain date. It is more like a live document that you use on a daily basis that will basically tell you how to conduct your work on a daily, you know, basis. And then the list of deliverables. What do you expect? What kind of output do you expect at what interval? Intervals. Um, the testing environment, like you know, uh, how how our servers refreshed, you know, what service exists and who is going to maintain what, where is the communication list for that, all of that. And if you're using any tools, for example, this um, 
test plan right here. Um, this assumes that the you know um, the test management is carried out using HP ALM. Uh, so if you are going to use a tool, you will have to define rules about how you're going to use them, in what circumstances, uh, who should have access to them, who should not, and if you need access, who should you contact. All of that information should be incorporated in your test plan. Coming to defect management. Defect management also is an integral part of your test plan, as you can see. There's a defect tracking and reporting flowchart. So this will tell whether you are a new tester or whether you've been in the team for 10 years, it's a good idea to lay out some ground rules uh, so that there is no differentiation in the behavior or the way work is conducted by these two different people who have different experiences. Uh, so to do that, it's a good idea to sit down and write your you know, test plan document as comprehensively as possible. Uh, so you see here the defect tracking and reporting um, you know processes listed out and to show you a little further also in your test plan it will also give you an idea of um, the defect severity just a second um, see this is a table that will tell you when you found find a bug how do you assign a particular severity level to your bug uh, so you can lay out your ground rules. Some teams use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Some teams use 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So whatever it is that your team is going to follow, lay out the rules out there, uh, out there in your test plan. Uh, risks and risk management. So risk management is a separate topic that we have dealt with on our website and a lot of uh, in our classes. Uh, but risk management in the test planning phase is all about, uh, you know, making, being being aware of what kind of you know problems are going to come up and listing those problems out. So here you see schedule is a risk, not having enough resources is a risk, defect found too late in the sector. So any problem that you're anticipating with your testing project to go wrong, you'll just go ahead and list them in the risks. Then do an impact analysis and rate them as high, medium, low and all the high risks will be dealt first. And then comes the mitigation plan where you're trying to come up with solutions possible solutions on how you can avoid that problem or how you can recover from that problem if it really occurs. Uh, so mitigation plan is where you will provide that information. Again, this is different for different teams. Uh, in our document, at least we have gone overboard with it. As you can see, we've included natural disasters and all. You don't have to do it at that level, uh, but try to think beforehand usual kind of risks that QA teams normally encounter are scope changes, development team not being ready, or you using a tool that is incompatible with the sort of testing that you're trying to perform. So all these are generally problems that, you know, happen within a, um, I mean, that, that, that are potential problems within a QA project. Uh, finally, there is also exit criteria. See, when to stop testing is an important question, and we have to ask ourselves that very, very often. Uh, so whatever it is that the criteria that you set for your team, go ahead and incorporate that in your test plan and decide when you need to stop testing. Um, so for example, this team has listed that if 100% test scripts are executed, if 95% pass rate of test scripts is there, and when there are no critical or high severity defects, you can stop testing. So basically come up with your own set of rules on when you want to stop testing. Um, so again, in my opinion, test plan really talks about what to test, when to test, how to test, which environment to test, what tools to use, what data to use, what environment to use, who are the people, what are they supposed to do, and risk management. So again, you don't have to be like me remembering 11. Right now, if you ask me to recollect what those 11 points were, I probably can't. Uh, but I think, you know, concept-wise, all of these, uh, you know, as long as you have a concrete test plan that have all that has all of these contents, uh, I believe you're good to go. So with the test plan, pl planning activity, one thing that really works out is to sit down and strategize how you want to perform your testing beforehand. Once you do that, get a common consensus from your team. Once they all agree, uh, that is a good starting point for you to sit down and start document your test, documenting your test plan document. Uh, and also, typically, you know, this is the normal size of test plans, even in real-time projects, 19 to 20 
20 to 25 pages I would say uh, but then it doesn't have to be so there are some teams that don't use word documents they simply go for Excel sheets where they're just you know listing out few guidelines uh, always the thumb rule is that it's always content over format so if you find whatever content that you have if you can find a good way to represent it there goes to your template so don't expect templates to be difficult uh, because difficult templates actually don't serve any purpose other than complicating our daily lives as testers uh, so as long as your test plan is addressing every aspect of your testing activity it is concrete and you uh, really have to and it's not like you create it once and you will just use it uh, for the rest of the testing engagement that's not how it works as and when we have more information as and when us even the slightest change happens it's a good idea to go back to your test plan document update it keep it current at all times a very well planned testing engagement has a very high success uh, rate so it really is worth your while to invest that time in creating a really good work product um, you know in terms of a concrete test plan so I hope this session was helpful to you um, as always any comments or questions please let us know thank you